Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. At the end of time, this King will come in glory to judge the living and the dead. He will ask how we treated the hungry and thirsty, the stranger, the naked, those sick or in prison. But in the meantime, he will bind our wounds and revive our sometimes drooping spirits like a good shepherd. And so as we come to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass, we recall times that we have failed in love as we continue to God, enjoy God's love and favor. Lord Jesus, you are a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things, in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We are attentive to God's holy word.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a man. For as all died in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who put all things in subjection under him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. And the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? The king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, Then he will say to those at his left hand, 
you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away to eternal punishment the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, uh, no doubt we're all familiar with the golden rule. And that quote, in fact, comes from earlier in Matthew's Gospel, from chapter 7, verse 12. To do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Well, Matthew's account of the king that we have just heard proclaimed really does call us into action. It's not just mere words. The appropriate action it calls us forward in faith. How we have seen Christ in others. And how have we sought to serve Christ as we've reached out to those most in need. As we come to the end of this liturgical year, in this solemnity of Christ, our universal Lord and King, perhaps the, the conclusion of this liturgical year is like none we've can ever imagine in this pandemic year. It is a most challenging time to respond to this question of action and loving our neighbor. And yet in this present time, this pandemic time, that has separated us from one another, one must ask if we've been able to get beyond being stifled despite the limits that have been placed upon us in various ways, right now present, in our everyday lives and been able to press through. The response to the beautiful psalm, Psalm 23, so familiar to us, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. What a pretty beautiful refrain to the shepherd's song. There is nothing I shall want. God, our loving God, gives us all that we need. Perhaps we wrestle with that and have wrestled with that because we wrestle with what we want. And uh, it's not so long ago I was quoting the words of St. Thomas Aquinas and asking people what their altar is. And realizing that in fact, as Aquinas says to us, there's nothing that can replace God aspect of power, pleasure, or honor, or wealth. Nothing can replace the love of God. And so when we look at this shepherd's song, this beautiful song, which is all encompassing for our entire lives, it's important that we ask the question, how familiar are we with the shepherd? There's a story of uh, Told many times and was introduced to it uh, so many years ago. And it was about a great orator who was known for his proclamations. When people heard that he was coming into the area, uh, great crowds would gather in anticipation. And interesting enough, he was very familiar with the 23rd Psalm. And so this particular evening was like none other. He was coming and he was going to proclaim the Psalm and 
people were riveted by his presentation and gave us a, gave a thunderous surprise applause when he concluded his proclamation. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. In the midst of the conclusion of his proclamation, as the crowds died down a bit from their response, a younger lad came from out of the crowd. And uh, the gentleman was somewhat surprised that he would approach him somewhat sheepishly, he said, Sir, sir, may I proclaim the 23rd Psalm? He was shocked. He looked at the boy and he said, You? You're just a little boy. But if you insist, okay, go ahead. Well, the crowds, as one can imagine, became silent and curious and Proceed. The boy proclaimed the 23rd Psalm. And at his conclusion, there was complete and utter silence throughout the crowd. Slowly but surely, you could hear people breaking down in tears. In some cases, people were sobbing. came up to the boy and he said, what did you do? What did you do? I've been proclaiming that the 23rd Psalm for years and I've never had a response like you've just received. What did you do? The boy turned to the man and he said, sir, you're a great orator and you proclaim the 23rd Psalm so very well. I know the shepherd, and that has made all the difference. Your friends, knowing the shepherd is the call to become familiar with Christ in and throughout our lives. The very gift of life that God has given us, that we can immerse ourselves in the life of Christ recognizing the gift of the anointing we have received in holy baptism. And that so many of us have been confirmed in the faith, called forward to invite others to follow our Lord. By no means is it easy. We can all speak of our stumblings along the way, our struggle. And yet to return to the heart of Christ, that is our greatest call. There's a familiar expression that I know many are fond of, and I have become fond of it over the years. And it can be jarring in its hearing. If you were accused in a court of law of being Christian, would they find enough evidence to convict you? Wow. It is a challenging question. It's a question for the ages. Is a question for our daily living. How can we know and see Christ in our daily lives? And like this beautiful gospel, the challenge of the King, and also thanksgiving and the recognition of those who had seen him and others in an opportunity to serve them, to see them, to recognize them. It is in the present and sisters, that despite the challenges that do continue to separate us, family and friends from loved ones, we are called daily to see God in those in our lives and our hearts, those that are downtrodden, those who are separated, those who are struggling and distant from one another, like we are. As we honor Jesus as our Lord and King, we do so as we journey in a month where we have considered the commemoration of our faithful departed, in which we began the month, 
acknowledging all saints, recognizing that in many of those who have gone before us in faith, that they were a tremendous example to us of what it is to see Christ in everything they do, to encounter Christ in those they serve. And we thank them for their example. Thank them for the example that they gave us when they also saw Christ in us. I'd like to conclude uh, with a couple of lines that I additionally have grown fond of over the years that remind us to see Christ and others until we breathe our last. And I hope these are lines that you can remember and live by. The first one is this. When you die, what you take from this life is what you've given away. And if that doesn't suffice, I say this. When you use your life for others, you discover who you truly are. Praise be Jesus Christ, both now and forever. Amen. confidence we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. There he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us present our prayers to God, the shepherd, who cares for all the flock. For Christians, that we may be kind like the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in church leadership, that God may give them wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry of the world, that we may share in the responsibility to feed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless, that we may look after them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those sick with COVID-19, that they may be healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed away beyond this world, particularly for Father Jerry Tolarski, for whom we offer this Mass, that they may dwell in the Lord's house forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we consider in the silence of our hearts the prayers we bring to the Lord this day. For these and all our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, caring shepherd, you look after your people. Hear the prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we present the gifts for the Mass.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god you anointed your only begotten son our lord jesus christ with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal universe, universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end. We acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, particularly Father Jerry, for whom we offer this Mass. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and David, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of your service, that your whole family ordered, order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased. O oh God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. From the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy, holy and venerable hands. With eyes looking up to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim. The holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them as ones who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne to the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, all those who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, though we are sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share with and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all things good, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I do not on our sins. But of the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace. Agnus <clears throat> Dei, que troles peccata mundi, miserere no. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccat. 
tamundi miserere nobis adus dei qui toles peccata mundi dona nobis pace Lord Jesus Christ Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world. Free us by this, your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ lead us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Having received the fruit of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
we can uh, return to full participation uh, in the liturgy and, and, and fill the pews. Um, grateful for those who have an opportunity to partake in the liturgy. Uh, please again pray for uh, assist as we uh, look to live stream this soon and uh, also uh, uh, continue to provide it uh, into the community in the time ahead. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be.